Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. Alright folks, Big Paul here today with another muscle rent. Contest prep is hard as f If you want to be a bodybuilder, you have to be able to make it through contest prep. I get a lot of people that come to me that think they want to be a bodybuilder, but then they go through contest prep and they find out it's not for them. Contest prep is what separates the men from the boys and the women from the girls. And we're going to talk about what you can expect on contest prep and the challenges and hurdles that you're going to have to get over to make it through. All right, before we get started, please check out the Science of Anabolics and PEDs e-course that Kurt Havens and I have put together. There's a free preview up on the Anabolic Bodybuilding website. There is a link to it in the video description below. There's about two hours of free content there you can check out. So let's talk about some contest prep now. So you want to be a bodybuilder, but you haven't done contest prep. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said they want it to be an IFBB pro, and then they can't make it through a contest prep. Contest prep is what separates the wheat from the chaff. And contest prep is hard as fuck. Most of the challenges that you experience on contest prep are mental. More so than physical. And a lot of people don't have the mental toughness or the mental fortitude that's required to be a good bodybuilder. Because contest prep is extremely difficult. You're going to be tired. You're going to be hungry. You're going to hurt, you're going to have brain fog, and you're going to have to tell yourself to get through this. You're going to have to push yourself daily. You're going to have to get up in the morning, shut that voice up that's in your head, that negative self-talk that tells you, oh, my coach doesn't know what he's doing. I look like I'm not going to be ready for the show. I There's a bunch of other things that are going on. I'm starving. I'm hungry. I'm achy. I don't think I have what it takes to do this. That voice in your head is going to get in the way. That is the one thing that screws people every time is that voice in their head. And I've seen it over and over and over again. And a lot of times what ends up happening is people start second guessing their coach. I see this. This happened to me. I talk to other coaches. This happens all the time where you'll get mid contest prep and people push the panic button. They think their coach is not doing the job because they're panicked. They're starting to get in their own heads and they jump to another coach. I personally don't take people mid contest prep. I always tell people to finish their contest prep with their current coach. I've never seen it work out well when somebody jumps mid contest prep. And usually it's self doubt that's causing this. Most of the time it's just stuff that you've imagined in your head that gets in the way of, of your progress. One of the things that I've seen is where people start worrying about things too much. If you're anxious, if you ha are a hypochondriac, if you're a person that has a warped view of yourself, can't see objectively what's in the mirror, contest prep might not be for you. I've seen it a lot of times. I get people that get super anxious mid contest prep. They start second guessing themselves. They think that something I'm doing is not right. They they think that they look worse than what they do. They think they're behind or they think they're ahead and they start second guessing themselves. They, they don't follow the plan. They start doing different things than what the coach is telling them to do because they feel like they're falling behind. They seek out advice from other people, which often is the worst thing you can do. Sometimes people get too many people in their ear and you have all these different opinions all these different voices. And if you're a person that already has self-doubt and anxiety, that's just going to make things worse. I've seen it over and over and over again. I've seen this happen over and over and over again. And the end result is almost never good. It really isn't. Um, yeah, I, I will tell you this too. There's the other person and I tend to be this, this person. I'm the person that pushes myself 
too hard. There are people that just aren't tough enough. And then there's some people that are too tough. I will push myself too hard. I will do more cardio than what I'm supposed to do. I will eat less food than what I'm supposed to eat. I just push myself and I've dug myself into the holes before. This past year, I had my best prep that I've ever had. I had the best result on stage. I stayed medium that entire prep. I didn't get too upset. I didn't get too high. I didn't get too low. I just took everything day at a time. And I followed exactly what my coach told me. I don't know how people can prep themselves. There have been rare exceptions that have done it. Dorian Yates would be an example of it in the past. Someone who was able to prep themselves without help or a second set of eyes. That is a very, very special person that can be objective and look in the mirror and see see what's actually there. That is can keep their head level enough to make the correct decisions at the right time. Very, very, very few people have that sort of ability. I like to think that I'm mentally tough. I'm pretty smart. I know what I'm doing. I'm fairly objective about myself. At least I'd like to think so. But I lose my damn mind on contest prep sometimes. There's been times I've looked in the mirror and I see what I look like and I'm like, man, I look like shit. People are telling me I look great. And I look at the pictures and I'm like, man, this is, I'm not going to be ready. I don't look, I don't look good. And then I, two months after my show, I'll go back and look at the pictures and I'll be like, holy crap. What was I thinking? Where was my mind at? That's why I pay a coach. That's why I pay somebody to help me. That's why I have a second set of eyes to look, to look at me. So big mistakes that I see people make on contest prep, and I'll, I'll go through this again. One, letting too many people talk to you. It's just You're just going to twist yourself up into knots. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people made this mistake. They start talking to this expert, that expert. They start talking to other coaches. They get opinions from their boyfriend, their girlfriend. They get opinions from everybody at the gym. They tell them what they're doing. They start second-guessing everything. They get this anxiety about what they're doing. And then what happens is they end up screwing everything up. They end up changing everything around. They end up with a worse result on stage. They end up being in a stressed state. You can't understate that either if you're in a high cortisol state because you're worried about everything. Of course, your results aren't going to be great. The bodybuilders that do the best, the ones that I see that do the best, are the even keel people. The people that just do the work, the people that keep their mouth shut, the people that don't worry. A lot of times, this is hilarious, I've heard Justin talk about this, my coach Justin Harris, a lot of times the potheads are the ones that do the best on contest prep because they don't worry about anything. They just do what you tell them. Those are the people that often do best on contest prep. So much of contest prep is mental. It is all up here. There really isn't a physical part of it. It's all up here. And you have to learn how to keep that voice in your head quiet. You have to learn how to talk yourself down when you start getting worried about things. You have to learn how to stay medium. You have to learn how to not worry about things or get anxious about things. You have to not be a hypochondriac and think you're dying at every turn. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be concerned about your health. That's not what I'm saying. But you're going to feel like shit on contest prep. That's just a fact of life. There's going to be times where you're going to feel like eating food. That's another thing. Appetite. So much of appetite is mental. I've gotten really good at that part of it. I used to cave in the cravings, but now I can talk myself down easily. I just say, I'm not going to do it. It's... Not even question. I'm not going to eat that extra bite of food. I'm not going to have that cake. I'm not going to take a bite of that dessert. I'm going to follow the plan. I'm going to follow the plan perfectly. And I am going to put everything on stage knowing that I did my best and that I didn't alter a thing, that I followed the plan. And then I got up on stage and did everything exactly the way that it was supposed to be done. Now, if you get on stage... You don't like the results. You think your coach was an idiot. Hire a new coach after your show. But most often, most often, the coach isn't the issue. It's the person in the mirror that's the issue that gets people in trouble on contest prep. I almost always see it. It's the people that start deviating, that start second guessing, that start overthinking things. Those are the ones that screw up. It's not to say that a coach can't make a mistake. I certainly have made mistakes before. 
I've worked with people that made mistakes, but most times, more times than not, it's the person in the mirror that's at fault. It's the person in the mirror that's the problem. I will tell you this, if you can learn how to push yourself through a contest prep, if you can learn how to stay medium, if you can learn how to stick to a plan day in, day out, if you can learn how to keep that negative voice, the self-talk in your head, tamped down and quiet, those are skill sets that you can apply to every single thing in your life and be better at. That's a skill set that you can apply to business. That is a skill set that you can apply to whatever trade you're in. That is a skill set that you can apply to whatever art you're in, relationships, everything. And this is why I think bodybuilding is the perfect training ground for people to be successful in other areas of their life. Learning how to push yourself, learning how to overcome adversity, learning how to tamp down negative self-talk are invaluable skills that you can apply to every single thing that you, you do in life. And I think that's why a lot of times you'll see bodybuilders, especially people that make it to the professional level, end up having a lot of success in business later on. They have learned how to master that skill of pushing themselves, of being consistent, of keeping that voice, the negative self-talk out of their head. All right, folks, hopefully you found this one helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Go check out my e-course, two hours worth of free content. I think you're going to enjoy it. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.